Hey there, Heather Boyd Wire here, and today I'm filming the intro to my video at my parents' condo in Ottawa. We're here for a visit for Canadian Thanksgiving, and today I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful little beaded necklace. It's called an invisible necklace, or sometimes they call it a floating necklace, and it's using the little focal bead that I made in last week's video, so I'll link up that video below. So for this project, you're going to need your cluster bead from the previous video. I'll link it up below. You'll need tiger tail. This one is turquoise, but you can use the traditional silver colored tiger tail. You'll need six millimeter beads, two four millimeter beads, and your clasp, so the split ring and the lobster clasp, and your two millimeter crimps. And then you'll start by putting your cluster bead on the tiger tail and center it. And then you're going to add a four millimeter bead on either side of the cluster. So just a little bead on each side, that's so it will hold in place. And then you're going to add your two millimeter crimps, one on either side, and those are going to secure the whole thing in place, let the crimps fall down, and then just give them a little pinch with your flat pliers. You can use a special crimping tool if you have one, but I always just go for the flat pliers. I find it a lot easier. So once you have the cluster secured in place, you're going to add your crimp beads and space it about an inch to an inch and a quarter away from the center. You're going to pinch it in place and then you're going to do the same on the other side so you'll have them equally spaced apart on the tiger tail. So once it's pinched in place then you can add your six millimeter beads on either side and we're going to put a little crimp on after that, let it fall down and then give it a little pinch so that bead is suspended. And once you have all your beads on, I put three on either side, we're going to add our clasp. So to secure the clasp, you're going to put your two millimeter crimp and then you're going to put your little lobster clasp on there or whatever kind of clasp you want to use and then bend the tiger tail back into the crimp and give it a little pinch in place. You can add two crimps if you want. I usually just add one because it's fairly lightweight so it's not going to take a lot of uh, wear and tear on there. So we're going to do the same with the split ring. Crimp first, split ring after, put the end back through the crimp and give it a little pinch with the flat pliers to secure it in place and if you have a little pokey end you can always cut it off or just be careful that it doesn't come too far out of the crimp. Close it up and there you have your beautiful floating necklace. So thanks so much for watching the video. Give it a big thumbs up if you like it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for lots more DIY wire art and jewelry videos. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I go live and when I post new videos. And if you'd like to share pictures of your wire art and jewelry based on my tutorials, be sure to join the live wires in my wire art and jewelry makers club on Facebook. And if you don't have Facebook, no problem. You can send pictures to info at heatherboydwire.com and I'll share them in the community section of my channel. And if you'd like to check out my work that I make and sell on Etsy, be sure to check out my Etsy shop. I'll link it up below. My husband and I make custom wire wedding cake toppers and jewelry. And if you would like to just support me on Patreon, I have a Patreon account where I share sneak peeks and behind the scenes uh, photos from my studio. So I'm gonna link up my Patreon up below and we will definitely see you the next time. Thanks for watching.